I've had another request from one of the channel members. It reads like this. I need to create filtering based navigation based on that I have project sector and project name. When I click on project sector in table, it shows me respective projects. Now I want navigation from the project name that I click on to their respective project bookmark. You know me, I won't back down from a challenge, so I've had a look at it for the last week. So today I'm going to show you four options in which you can achieve something similar to this request. And yes, the channel member sent me the data and although I have his approval, I chose to create the, my own data. Let me walk you through the data so you can understand a little bit better what I'm about to do next. First, we have the project list. And in the project list, we have an ID for the project. We have the project name, the contract status, the start date, a forecast end date and a project sector. The second table that we have is the project status. Over here we have an ID for the status line. Then we have the project ID so we can link it to the previous table. Then we have a milestone. And I've put four for each project. Start, build, quality control and deliver. Of course, for your scenario you need to add your own milestones. We have a start date, an end date and a milestone number column so we can sort our milestone in the order that we want. Now the data model is pretty simple. The two tables are related using the ID for the project. Now in his project, he has bookmarks. So I've created one of my own for a different page. And it looks like this. It's a very simple page where I have a slicer and a project status. Of course, if I select a different project in the slicer, it will filter the results in the other visual showing us the progress that we made for that particular project. Now the challenge is to get from this page to this page by using the project name in the table. Now unfortunately in Power BI this is not possible right now, but we do have a couple of workarounds and I'll show you the variations and I'll tell you why I would use one or the other. So let me show you the first option that you have. The first one, of course, based on this project, is to use bookmarks. So for that, we need to add a bookmark button. So let's go to Insert, Buttons, Bookmark. Let's drag it over here. And now let's format it. Go to the Format pane. In the Action, select Bookmark. And for the bookmark, we will select Project. Next thing that we want to do, let's go to Button Style. Make sure its state is default, turn on the text and let's put here more info. Now if we hold control because we are in Power BI Desktop and press on more info, it will get us to the page that we desired. Of course, we can select a different project in the slicer and then we will have the information that is required. But for me, this is not the option that I would go forward with. Why? Because yes, it achieved part of the desired result, which is to go to a page that shows us more info. Still, it's difficult to manage. First of all, we can't add the button for each of these projects. If we save a bookmark for each project, then we might end up with something that will be very difficult to manage in the future. Second of all, regardless of any project that you select, if you click on the bookmark, it will take you to something else. You will still need to make a selection on that page. So you might as well have a different page for it. So you would say, okay, maybe we can create the ranking of the projects and then we add more buttons and no, it will not work. Why? Because first of all, you might end up with a different sort order for the projects and that will mess all your buttons, or you will add more projects. That's another thing that could happen. Or your visual, at some point, might be something like this, where you need to scroll down and up. Those bookmark buttons will be fixed in position. So, although this achieves something similar, it's not something that I would recommend you do. But I still have three more solutions, and all of them are easier to manage than this one. So let's start with the first one. First, let's delete this button as we will not need it anymore. 
Now, the purpose of this exercise is to show information about the project when the project is selected. How could we do that? Well, when you select the project in this table, you are creating a filter. And by using filtering, we can say, if something is filtered, then show me this information. What do I mean by that? Let me make a duplicate of this page. And then on the same page, I will add this visual from the project page. Let's copy it, paste it. Let's arrange it over here so it's easier to see and work with. Perfect. If we select the project, we have the information for that project. If we select another project, we have a different information and so on and so forth. But when there is no selection, I would like to see nothing, really. That's what we need to see. So for that, we need to change the measures. And by measures, I mean only this one. It calculates the distinct counts of a project end date when the end date is not blank. And of course, if the end date is blank, it returns a blank. And that's why when I click on one of the projects, if there is no end date for the deliver date, for example, it will show a blank result. But how can we change this measure to return nothing if there is no selection in the table? Well, it's very simple. It looks like this. If the project name is filtered, then calculate me the previous measure. If not, return blank. So let's change the measure, select the visual, go to build, replace the Y action milestone check with the second measure milestone check, hide the visual. And bada bim bada boom, the information is gone. If I select the project name, I have the information. So far so good. But there are still other pieces of information that we see, like the project status, the divider line, the X axis values. So what can we do about it? Let's start with the title. So for the title, I've created the measure that looks like this. If the project name is filtered, then it returns project status. Else it returns, please select the project. What do we need to do? We need to select the visual, go to formatting, title, and instead of the default text, we will go with a conditional formatting, field value, and we will select our measure, the title measure. Press OK. And perfect, it says please select the project. Or if we select the project, it shows the project status. Next, let's get rid of the divider. And for that, I have a measure that is very similar with the previous one. It looks like this. If the project name is filtered, then return this color, a dark gray. If not, return white, which is the color of the background. So let's select the visual, let's go to formatting, we go to title, we go to divider, and again, conditional formatting, and instead of rules, select field value, and we will select our measure, which is the first one. Press OK, perfect, the line is gone, let's select the project. Excellent, the divider is back on. And the last thing that we need to remove, the x-axis values. And for that, well, we can't really take them off, but we can make them invisible. What are we going to use? The same measure that we used for the divider. So select the visual, x-axis, color conditional formatting, again, field value, and we will select the same measure, which is this one. Okay, perfect. Let's put it to the test. Excellent. So far, it achieves what we wanted to achieve. If we deselect it, nothing. If we select it, we see everything. Perfect. This is a very nice and modern way of dealing with this situation. But there is a problem with this. This will block you a big chunk of space on your report, and you might want to use that space for something else. And here comes the third variation that you can use. Let's go back to our first page. Now, what we want to do is blend this page with this one. So, what options do we have? Well, there is one that not so many people use to add more information to their report, although they should. Let me duplicate this page first, and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. First of all, 
I'll delete the slicer as it is no longer necessary. Don't worry about this, this will be fixed in a second. Second, let's move it all the way to the corner and let's check the size. We have height 250 and width 876. Now what we want to do is change the size of the page that this visual is on to the exact dimensions of the visual. Go to canvas settings, instead of 16 by 9 select custom. The height should be 250 pixels and the width should be 876. One more thing that we could do, if we go to the visual, size and style, turn off the visual border so we don't have the rounded edges. But you'll ask me, how can we use this page? Very easy. If you go to page information, you see that the page type is standard. But what we want to use is type tooltip. Let's select that. And we will show the tooltip on. And here we need to select the project name. Let's select it. Perfect. Now let's go to the first page. You'll see if we hover over, nothing happens. What we want to do is select the table, go to properties, turn on the tooltips, and here we have type report page, which is still correct. And then instead of page auto, we will choose the duplicate page that we created earlier. Perfect. Now let's put it to the test. If we hover over this project, we have the information for this project. If we hover over the next project, we have the information for that project, and so on and so forth. This is a very slick way of dealing with our situation. But this has a problem also. You can only see the information for the project if you hover over. If you're not over a project name, then you won't be able to see the information. But worry not, I have the fourth option and I think that might solve the problem. We will use again the page type to our advantage. First of all, let me make another duplicate of this page. This will be the second duplicate. Again, I will remove this slicer as it will not be necessary. And if we go to page information, Instead of standard, we can choose drill true. Now again, the drill true will be made from the project name. Now let's go to the first page. Let's go over here. First of all, we could right click, drill true, duplicate the page two. Bada bim, bada boom, this should be sorted. But you'll see, can we make it more interesting? Of course we can. Let's go back to the page and let's add a button. Let's go to insert, buttons, blank. Let's move it over here and let's start formatting. And button style, we'll turn on the text and we'll say more info. And let's close this, let's open action, let's turn it on. The action type will be drill true and the destination will be the duplicate page. Now, if we put it to the test, let's select this project for example, bada bim bada boom, it takes us exactly where we want to. Of course, you could play with the formatting for the button or for this visual for example, but this is not the purpose of this exercise. But if you want me to do that, drop a comment and I'll be happy to help. But speaking of navigation, if you would like to build some cool navigation pane for your reports, if your report has multiple pages, then watch this video right here where I'll show you four different variations from the simplest one to one that looks really cool and it's exactly like in the modern apps. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want early access to videos like this one, all you need to do is become a channel member. This is Telian signing off. Cheerio!